Radio. We have an excellent episode today. I'm very excited. We have a guest, a guest that Darren, who really is a pioneer, Darren. You just oh, constantly you. are bringing me new artists. Go <laughs> figure. Um, you played this artist song, and I just I loved it. It was uh, all my exes are doing better than me. Um, the artist is Darren. I'll let you go ahead and introduce and say hello to our artist. Yeah, we have a wonderful singer songwriter based in New York, but uh, grew up in Scotland, which we'll talk to him. And it's Elliot Greer. Elliot Greer, say hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real, it's a real pleasure. Yeah, um, our pleasure. So, thank uh, through the miracle of social media, which, if used right, social media is a miracle. Uh, I, I stumbled across <laughs> Elliot's song on yeah. TikTok, of all things, because I, I clearly fit in the TikTok demographic. Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> You are I, a marketer, so. That's hey. true. I am yeah, on social true. a lot for, for a living. But I ran across this song, uh, all, all My Exes, and uh, I, I didn't find it with the song. Mm -hmm. And Elliot has a style of singing. He's got a cry in his voice, I think, that, that, that caught my attention. Started paying attention to him, and, and here he is. We thought we'd hear his story. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Elliot, I mentioned that you are in New York City. We're going to talk about your background and, and yeah. how you got into music, but I did notice on social media that you injured yourself recently, and you're still playing gigs in New York. How in the heck do you play guitar with your arm in a sling? You know, yeah. So unfortunately, I did. I broke my I broke my collarbone last mm. Friday, um, like September second. Um, so like a week and a half ago, um, and it's been a bit of a journey. And I I had to cancel the show. I was actually going to. It's funny. I was actually going to play a show the following night on the Saturday night. I have I have like a residency on a Saturday night. Um, and I remember the booker called me up and we're like. When were you going to tell me that you can't play the show tonight? Like, this was actually like, quite ridiculous. And this was at, like five o'clock, and the show is yeah. at like seven. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm going to do the show. And she was like, no way. What do you mean? Uh, uh, and I was so, you know, I've worked so hard to like secure these residencies mm. that I want to just like, no, I don't, I don't want to say baby it, but I just kind of was like, well, I don't want to, I, I pay my bills with music. So I thought yeah. if I don't play these shows, Right. I'm going to lose the shows and then I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, so it was, a, it was kind of stressful because it was, it was, you know, as any kind of gigging musician will, will understand getting these gigs are sometimes hard and there's always someone else waiting behind you to take the spot. Yeah. Uh, so I was prepared to do it. Um, and I mean, obviously I was going to be careful. I was, I, I'm not reckless. Like I didn't, you know, ultimately I do respect, science and i respect like bones that need to heal mm -hmm. uh, but i kind of was like maybe i'll make it work and then a long story short they were kind of like yeah that's crazy you cannot you absolutely cannot do that uh so i think i gained brownie points from that perspective yeah. they were like oh, you're good this guy's in this guy's yeah. in um so i took the night off and then i canceled i had like two more gigs that week and then i eventually on the friday like friday and saturday there i played for the first time and I've been able to like work out a way to like manipulate my guitar. Oh my gosh. Like, hold oh it. Oh my like, gosh. Uh, almost kind of like Spanish style. So I'm not really moving too much of my shoulder. Um, so I'm not doing this. And I'm lucky that I, I, I do do a lot of finger picking. And mm. if I, if I wasn't a finger picker, I, if I would, if I had to strum, it would have been a, a, a much different situation. So, yeah. It was it was a kind of like it was a nice kind of moment of like okay thank God I picked up a little bit of finger picking years ago because it did pay off in this moment. But, Elliot, yeah. a, a couple things. One, you had me with your music, but yeah. your drive has sent me over the top. I'm uh, officially on board for the Elliot Greer. Two, it will be okay if you decide to start any type of fundraiser or Kickstarter to help just to help out to bridge absolutely. a gap. Please send it to yeah. us. We'll share okay. it on our social media. We'll share it with our listeners and everybody else. I, I, you have a Venmo account, I think. Is that right? Yeah, we'll, yeah. Put, a, yeah. we'll put a link up there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's Ellie, Ellie Greer official. Um, that is I, fantastic. I, really, I never want to be the guy who, you know, asks for a handout and things like that. But people have been generous, like, you know, and, and, and have sent me a little bit of money. And I, yeah, I just never want to be that guy who, 
you know what it's like. I'll yeah, stop I, I, you. You're not. You're not. Yeah, we're, We've we all get it. been we there. Respect that. And and your music speaks for itself. And I'm sure there's a million people that would love to support that. And we're one of them. So you're not. Can you do something for me though? I want to back up. I feel like we did a quick introduction, and I want the people to know where you're from, yes. um, where your origins are, and how you kind of got over here. We can hear it a bit in your accent, but please <laughs> uh, lead away. Yeah, of course. Um, well, to try and condense it to make it somewhat interesting so, that, so I don't bore you guys. Um, <laughs> it's, um, I started with uh, both my parents were uh, like in the industry, they, but, but they did like uh, West End shows, like kind of like Broadway kind of stuff. So they were in the theater. Uh, my dad has a great voice in his own right um, and does a lot of, he was in shows like. Uh, nice, Darren. Thank you. Nice one. So professional. <laughs> So Darren's, sorry. Darren's so a sorry. very important person. Please get back to your father's your father's voice. I was much more interested in your father's voice. Please I turned, continue. I turned it off. This is a long story, so you could probably take the call and I'll just, <laughs> I'll just be back. A sense of humor, drive, you know, good looking. Well done, my friend. Please keep going. <laughs> uh, but, so, um, yeah, my dad was in shows like Lee Miz and things like that. Um, so, kind of does that kind of thing. And my mom was a dancer. Um, so I'd always kind of grown up around music and especially hearing my dad sing. Um, and then, uh, they moved up to Scotland when I was around six and, uh, they now own like a, a, a well-established like stage school, like for like, like training kids that like to go in theater and television and stuff like that. Um, and then. I went to music school uh, when I was like 17. I got early, I got like early acceptance to be, to be, like study songwriting and vocals. Um, and I went and I, to be honest with you, I was just like too young. I was just like, yeah. I was I, not, maybe not too young, but just like emotionally too young. Just like fresh, I was just, too, yeah, fresh. too fresh. Um, and I kind of went in and I made a little bit of a splash in the beginning and um, it's a long story, but um i got asked to sing with some of the original original members of the the rock band deep purple i don't know if you remember nice deep absolutely wow. yeah that's awesome that, that all came from college because they were doing this like integrated program and it was with john lord and um all these people so i got asked to sing before i even got accepted into the college they were like we want to use you as the lead singer and then that just kind of like went to my head a little bit. And I was like, I don't need to go to theory class. Like, you know, this and that. Like, <laughs> I don't read music in, in the slightest. I do not read a note. Uh, so I kind of was like, that just felt like a lot of work to me. It just felt like it, it, it kind of stifled the creativity aspect for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I get it. There is a time and a place to read music. And, and at times I kind of wish I had learned it more and, and, and done that, but it just, for the way I was set up just doesn't, it did, didn't work for me. Well, John um, Mayer left as well and look how it turned out for him. So yeah, you're doing yeah, fine. And I, and I heard, I, he actually, um, he did an interview recently and he was like, I really don't read music, which I, mm -hmm. I am shocked at that because I did think he would be able to read, but apparently he's like, I don't really read that. Nah, well. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of people. Long that list, music long that, list yeah. that are, that are yeah. wonderful yeah. musician. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ollie, I, I'm very curious. Um, Sorry, Mike, if I jumped in front of you, but you know what you're talking about is your younger life in Scotland, and you decided when you went to college. I saw in your bio, bio that you moved to America when you were 18, which I, I find incredibly gutsy. I I could not I could move to a foreign country now, but not when I was 18. Mm -hmm. I mean, how to, how talk about those those first few years? And America's culture is quite different from a lot of other places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you survive? What kind of music you listen to? I mean, how was the adjustment on the move over? You know, it's funny that you say that you could move now. And it's funny because I had this conversation with someone recently. I sometimes feel like ignorance was bliss back then. Like I didn't think anything could go wrong. Like life didn't, I, I was quite sheltered in a way that I like, I have a great relationship with my parents and the, the, like the, I wasn't like, the most worldly guy at 18, I was kind of like, you know, I was very close with my mom and very close to my dad and like sheltered would be a good word, I suppose to put it. Um, so I kind of went to New York and I just thought, well, what's the worst that could happen? You know, and, and, and <laughs> now 
I was very, very lucky because now that I've actually went through a lot of ups and downs, like a lot of people have, mm -hmm. it, it, now I have more hang ups. So like if someone was to say to me, like, would you move to the other side of the world now? I think I'd be more apprehensive now. That's because funny. Live You're more aware. Like, this, yeah, I, this could go wrong. This could go wrong. This, we're back then. I, <laughs> I remember to my parents, I'll be fine. If I don't like it, I'll just come home. Um, right. It was a very, so I kind of just took it day by day I, I, I you know it, when you when I when I when I tell this story to people it always sounds like I always always reference like Harry Potter when Harry Potter always says like you know when you list out all the things I've done it looks really really courageous and like really really great but there was a lot of luck and a lot of I, there was a great support system around the things that I did so it would be easy for me to be like well you know I had loads of loads of guts and I just moved out there and I was raw and I was just ready to go but it was a lot to do with like, I, you know, I had relationships that I was in, like the like girls I was seeing, they helped me get through it to the next stage. And then like teachers would get help me get through it. So there was all, you know, I, I believe no one can do it on their own. You well, know, I, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, he's humble as well. And it's obviously sincere. I, I really, that's fantastic. And it's a good outlook. As they say, though, luck is preparation meeting opportunity. Um, and you put yourself constantly in the right places. And I can already tell by your brief stories that you do. You you weren't going to give up a gig with no right arm. And you're a guitarist. And you're like, no, I'm going to be there. And, and it is a weird industry. You never know who's going to be there. And you never know who's going to see that. And like, I will say, as being in the industry, somebody yeah. like you very much interests me. My number one criteria is drive. Like, mm. you can have all the talent in the world, but the person with drive is going to win. They're gonna they're gonna win. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I completely I, I think there's so many people that rely on just talent. And I think the the, the problem is it's a catch twenty two. There is a there's a problem now with certain things on TikTok, and I know we're here because of TikTok. So there's not it's, TikTok's not a bad thing. The only thing that I would say to artists who have you know who get major success from posting videos I sometimes think you know they get the, the record deals and then they get blown up into stardom and then they have to like cancel tours because they get burned out yeah. and i think that, that i'm a big believer in like this industry is about craft and it's it's like it's you know if you if you're going to go back to like a carpenter say i want to go to the guy who's done 500 tables not a guy who's like wow He's very talented, but he's done two. Mm. Is this guy going to be mm. able to fit my house? So I'm always, I'm always a big believer in like people need to get out there and like cut their teeth on gigs with no one sitting there, mm -hmm. no one watching you, people telling you no, and that is what separates. If you, if you, I'm a big fan of the the Navy Seals. Like I, I, I find that fascinating, and I always think like it kind of like weeds out the people that are like, and it, and you can still love it. But there's people that are lifers who will stick it out. They'll mm -hmm. have the grit. Mm -hmm. um, and then other people might realize, and that's not a bad thing, but they might realize, oh, I don't know if I, I want to do that. I, sure. I don't know if I if I love it that much. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always had that mentality. And it's it's the type of thing where I've, I've I mean, I'll be honest with you, I've wanted to give up several times in my career. Like sure. I, 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 the running thing I get is you're so talented. You have such a great voice. And to be honest with you, what, always comes from it is sometimes nothing like mm -hmm. it, it's lots lots of great compliments and then there's no follow through and you know there's times where i'm talking to my girlfriend and i sometimes just feel like i don't know if i can keep doing this like this it's just very hard but there's just something in me that just won't quit and mm -hmm. i don't know what that is but it's just i i will just keep hanging on until I don't know until I maybe get a concussion or something like God forbid, and then like just completely <laughs> my personality, you know. It's, and I think it's like it's you know it's, it's you'll probably be the same. It's like when you if you're in it, it doesn't matter about the the fame or anything else. It's just you're in it because that's all. That's that's it. That's your whole your whole existence sure. is that, and it's, sure. it's 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 a part of your DNA. So. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, well, we certainly agree with that, and I, I respect everything you just said. I really did. Um, so, and one of the things that we always like to talk about on this show, and by the way, that whole sort of working through and putting in the work, what you talked about is we, we talk about that a lot on this show, 
But talk to us about your songwriting process. And Michael will constantly point out uh, when we review artists, if they're if they're strictly a pop artist, I, I always I don't always give them the respect maybe they deserve because I favor singer songwriters. Talk about your songwriting process. How how does it work for you? And and maybe specifically give us a bit about all my exes are doing better <laughs> right, than me because yeah. it. It, we we want to know if you really have an ex that has a PhD and a grammar nominee. And, and it really <laughs> hammered. It hammered. I was like, man, you had you you really had me as a fan. Aside from well, everything at that, we, so we please. Said, we said there's no way that he made that up. That's got to be real life. <laughs> we have bets. Well, well, here this is an exclusive because I've never I've had a lot of people saying this, so and I've never actually delved into this. All so right. There is one. There is because on TikTok, you've got so many people have been like, "There's no way you've dated." people with Grammy nominations and PhDs. How would they know? <laughs> yeah. So the thing, uh, the, there is one fabrication in the, in the song. I, I've never dated someone who has a PhD. A liberty uh, is what I like to call it. There's a liberty that you liberty, took. That, yeah. So that's, that's, that's the one that I, I did. Okay. I, my creative license for that. Yeah. But I, I, I do have an ex who is a Grammy nominated uh, performer. Who I will not say their name because that would just be we're not in, not in the greatest situation. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I wish her all the best. Yeah, um, and I have other I have another ex who just had uh, like a baby and just got married and and the song the song kind of started. I was I wrote it. I was down visiting my girlfriend in Florida or no, sorry her family. She lives with me in New York, but we were down visiting, and I, I went on online and I had so, uh scrolled i saw one of my exes and it was like <laughs> a broadway show she's an actress and i was like oh great okay that's that's good to know and then i saw another one it was like just nominated for a grammy award for best album and i was like okay just biting your and lip then, like, <laughs> a day later it was like i saw another friend of mine share an, another ex basically saying um I'm getting married to this guy. So it, it was a combination of all three. And I was like, are you actually kidding me right now? Yeah. I was like, what is, what is this? Yeah. Um, and that's, and then the, the song came together pretty fast. So um, the, the material pushed the song. You had an impact and, and a, a download basically of like information. And then you went to your guitar or pen first? Which one did you head to first? I remember I, came, I, remember I wrote down the thought. Because I'm a big, it, not all the time, but I, I usually try and find like a, a an interest and thought to find first. Um, and I remember I came up with all my exes are doing better than me. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that's a very, and I, I just kept writing. All my exes are doing better than me. And I just wrote. And it first started off with like, you know, as you do going through the process, like one has a Broadway show, one has this, one has mm -hmm. that, one has that. And I sort of simmered it down. Um, but the one that really got me was the Grammy nomination. And I was just kind of like, cause obviously as a musician, that's something that you, you want, that's a, that's a big, that's a big deal. And yeah. you're like, that's, that's great. Um, so that's where, and that's where I based the whole thing. So it was the nominee, it was the E right. That was, that was the, the vowel that I came off it. Cool. And then it just, it kind of fell into place. And then obviously the, the PhD was like you said, it was a creative, a creative mm -hmm. license, uh, that I, I took on that one. Um, I, well, I, I well, want to guess who the Grammy nominee is. Yeah, we can play a game. Uh, does, you're, how old she, are you? Hold on. You does talking? she play R and B and sing? Don't and put wears sunglasses spot. and plays a strat. And her, uh, her name is her. Oh no, no! I mean, that would be great. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. He'd probably be letting us know. Yeah, not, not as well. She's not a well-known. Fair she's enough. Not, and that's the thing that's confusing for a lot of people on TikTok. They were like. Well, who is she then? Is it some? It's, she's not. It's so so oh, yeah. funny what people like chew into. Um, how old are you, Elliot? Are you twenty eight, twenty seven? Uh, twenty nine. So so just so you know, give it five years. One of them might have a PhD, my friend. <laughs> One might become president. Yeah. Yeah. To all my exes who might listen to this, yeah. there is still time. If you want to change, if you want to get a different route. Please hit me up. I might I might write a sequel to the to, to the song. That's really uh, that's that's really fantastic. Well, I love the writing process. You did what I, what we call and what I call and and many writing for the payoff. You know, you found all my exes are doing better than me, and then you back rolled that, and you kind of had the story. I always feel like my teeth sink in. I'm like, I got it now. Like. The second I have that concept, and it seems like that for you, um, I, I love that writing process, and I love how you kind of just, 
the authenticity with which you grabbed it gravitated me. I was immediately drawn in. I was like, oh, this is powerful. I really, it really means a lot. It was a song that I had no expectations on. Like it is, it is my most successful song. And, and, and the things that have come from that song has been kind of crazy in its own kind of way. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's been, it's, it really has been a, a, a kind of interest in just all the messages, all the people that have kind of reached out and labels and managers and different things. And it's, it's, it's so interesting because it, it really was a song that I've tried, like like every writer, you try and sit down at times and think, okay, I'm going to write a great mm-hmm. song. I'm going to write, write You know, it's going to be a huge hit and it's going to be like, speak to people. And nine out of 10 times, it turns out to be a piece of garbage. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like well, oh, that was cool. And, you know, I used to, I used to, my dad used to always say to me, if you're going to write like a song that's going to speak to someone, it's going to be in you your whole life. It's just mm-hmm. whether, it's just, can you release that song? And, mm-hmm. I emotionally release it and and you know he's always said to me and he's not a writer but he used to always say to me just write for the trash can just write just 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 throw it away don't don't right. put the pressure right. on it and that was a great example of i just was writing yeah. to just get some of these things out like and then it just and it just shows you that it's it, it was more of a therapeutic response and i kind of thought and then when i put it when i put the first video out, it was just it was more like a routine like yeah, it's fine. I'll put it out. See, and then after that video, I was like, "Oh wait, maybe people kind of like this." Mm-hmm. Um, so, and El- then, Elia, yeah. one thing, one thing I, that we, another thing we talk about on the show, and as a friendly reminder, look, you didn't write that song quickly. You spent 15, 20 years learning mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. to write that mm-hmm. song quickly. Sure. I, I hate it when songwriters get dismissed because I, mm-hmm. you know, he wrote it on a napkin in ten minutes at a cafe. Yeah, wrote yeah. It. No, no, he or she didn't. They spent twenty years learning how to write yeah. for music that gave them the skill set to do that. Yeah. So I, yeah. I completely, yeah, that's very, that's very, yeah. I think that's great. That's a great, uh, a, a great thought because it's, it's, yeah, I, I totally agree. When you hear these people like. You know chris martin he says like i wrote yellow in eight minutes and i'm like uh, no well, you didn't congratulations yeah, yeah you had, you've had like 20 years yeah life of, <laughs> yeah. that you've drawn from which, yeah you know it's yeah like, um but yeah and I, I think that's the thing with every writer it's it's like you know i i, I like long story short like what i was asked to be an american idol and i was very hesitant to do that like just you know, back to what we spoke about, I, I, not that I take myself seriously, but I take this, I take the craft seriously. I take it, I don't think it's a joke. And I think it's, I don't think you have to, you know, be writing Shakespearean sonnets, but, but I, you know, I, 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 I think there's a lot of great writers that I really respect. And I, you know, and I kind of thought is doing a show like that, is it leading into the thing that I kind of don't, uh, is it kind of going against things that I sort of yeah. agree with or disagree with, you know? And then long story short, I did the show and um, the thing that I noticed was some of the greatest singers that I've, it is probably hands down the greatest group of singers that I've ever been in a room with. Like mm-hmm. they, are, they are, as vocalists, you would be, you would be an idiot to say that they're not good singers. They are, mm-hmm. they are, right. they could sing with anyone, they could sing. They're at a very, very, very high level. The thing that I noticed, though, not with all of them, but with some of them, the some of them hadn't even written a song, right, um, yeah. or and, no and, training and, at all, right. And 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 I remember when I played some of my own songs at the very last performance I did. The response was not just about my voice, but I had so many people talking about my writing, um, mm-hmm. and that's what I realized, you know, to get record deals and to get the things that people ultimately want, especially on a show like that, it, you can have the greatest voice in the world, but if you don't have a song, mm-hmm. you will only have the greatest voice in the world. It's a, you, right. need, you, need the, you need a, you need a, a vehicle to, to showcase that, you know? So, and I think that's the thing that the, the biggest lesson that I've learned over the last you know, over my life, that it, it it's in my opinion best song wins. Uh, whether and it's a it's a it's a nice marriage between having a, a good voice that people can relate to, but it, it's people connect to stories. You know, and 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 that's, that's 
that's that in my opinion that's what it boils down to we should do darren i'm gonna jump in here we've got five minutes left and i wanted to play a song that you released called van gogh in la after talking feverishly about all my exes are doing better than me which i think we played three weeks ago we so did. if you're yeah. listening right now here at 94.3 kwvh wimberley valley radio and you missed it Go back and check it out or check out that song. However, we're going to play a song called Van Gogh in L.A., Elliot, uh, by Elliot Greer. Elliot, we leave us uh, in existence here. So you might hear us talk in the middle of your song. It's a little bit different. We want to interact with your music sometimes. We sometimes want to, you know, comment or say something. So if you say something, we'll also hear it. We don't get to watch things with the artist around that much. So I'm excited. So if we can, okay. I'm going to go ahead and play Van Gogh in no, L.A. We have about five minutes, so quick comments. Yep, we'll do quick comments. Uh, say something, don't say something, but we're all going to stay present. And, this and, is Van uh, Gogh. Go ahead, Darren. Well, and your in your website, Elliot, ElliotGreer.com or ElliotGreerMusic.com? Mm -hmm. uh, ElliotGreer.com. Elliot Greer. I will, I will book in this, I promise, at the end. We'll give <laughs> all of your data and information after the song. We're going to listen to Van Gogh in L.A. right now by Elliot Greer. Here we go. Hollywood sign, Hollywood sign, sitting by your side, middle of me, trying to find the right damn words to say. This will do well in Texas. I agree. Yeah. Honey, you're you fine. Yeah, huh? I'm fine. I never thought I'd like LA. This is all signs. I have all the heritage of the most people in the world. And that's how this whole thing is. I'm not with the film. This is cool. This is my style of music. Same, same. I love it. But please don't leave me just because you can. Yeah, it's funny because it's very funny. I'll, I'll pause it. Go, go ahead. Say what you're going to say, Elliot. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say it was, it was very different, but it was. It, I tried to capture Los Angeles. So, so the sound is my interpretation of Los Angeles. So I nice. love it. What's nice. What's funny about it is that we have a big convergence of LA down in Austin, Texas. Big so time. I'll keep playing, but it has a surf rocky vibe, but it also fits yeah. a lot of Texas. So we'll keep uh, jamming uh, on yes, it. Yes, it does. I, I yeah. love that LA vibe. <laughs> Cool. Some famous chicks says I look like Van Gogh. Honey, your eyes, honey, your eyes, help me see brighter down the road. And no star night can shine quite like so. Don't misunderstand when I say you like it. He's coming there. are closed as I'm currently jamming this track so just so everyone who can't see the video knows Mike is gonna put the song when he's in the car <laughs> it's a funny joke. inside joke when I say you look the ocean to myself love the fields great lyrics Awesome. Uh, I think it's safe to say you will not be playing that live while your arm's in a sling. Hey, that would be difficult. Yeah, if you need a guitarist and I'm in New York, I got you, brother. I'll please. I'll fill in That's for awesome. a bit. You sing that, your heart that, out. Is the first part of that, is that a shuffle that you're playing? 
Mm. Is, uh, is that a shuffle? Light? I'm gonna need to go back to cl- lessons with Darren. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. All <laughs> right. Okay. I, I set up. Let's let do. me let me do this. It's awesome. Everybody, that was Van Gogh in L.A. by Elliot Greer. Elliot, would you give us your information? Your you know potentially website would be fantastic. I'm assuming you have your social media handles on your website. Yes. I do. Okay, so let's go with your website uh, so everybody's got it. Yeah, so my website is very simply uh, elliegreer.com. And then all my other channels like Venmo, uh, Instagram, everything like that, TikTok is just Elliot Greer Official. And, and I'm going to be clear here. It's E L L I O T. Right. Yep. Greer, G R E E R. Right. That is correct. Elliot Greer. Elliot, it was a pleasure. You have two true fans here down in Austin, Texas. If you, my friend, ever come to Austin, Texas, reach out. I'll get you booked. No problems for sure around town. You'll have a great time. You'll be well accepted down in Austin, Texas. In fact, there's some wonderful songwriter festivals that you should potentially play at, and then you can spread out across Austin, Texas. Writing is a big one. It's a good one. I love the way you write. Uh, you know, your your words first and your voice is emotive. You have great drive. You're passionate. And ladies uh, out there and gentlemen, he's good looking and he's humble as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Elliot. I really, it's a real pleasure. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time. It's really, it's been a real honor. Yeah, well, this is ev- fun. Everybody here.